Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be headed out thrifting. We're gonna take those items and I'm gonna show you how to upcycle them and style them in your home. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I spy some baskets. Ooh, love these, y'all know I do. And the color is perfection. There's four of them, totally getting those. Oh wait, there's five of them. Wow color is so good on this one these are perfect somebody looks like they used it as a tray can be used as that or they're great to hang on the wall because they're not you know too thick they don't stick out too much so i'm getting all of these i added this beautiful basket to my wall with a lamb's ear wreath in the center and although i love a good basket wall i actually do not have one in my home i prefer to just have baskets sprinkled throughout especially if there's a smaller space where I feel like it just needs a little something y'all remember a few weeks ago when I went to Kentucky and I went thrifting at the biggest junk store I had ever seen well I found this metal piece I think it's a tire room and I also found this very rusty round pan and they fit together perfectly this pan is extremely rusty so the first thing i want to do is seal it i'm going to be using dixie bell's clear coat in a flat finish so this will seal in all of that rust so it won't get on any of you know whatever i put in it but it's also going to give me a nice flat finish as well I need a little more surface area to actually glue the pan to. So I have this wood thing in my stash that's the perfect height that I need. So with a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue, I'm just gonna glue it to this middle piece right here. And then I'm gonna take my pan, I'm gonna glue it to that wood piece and then also around the rim. And again, I'm gonna use a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue. The Gorilla Glue will permanently keep it together and the hot glue just kind of dries quickly and keeps it in place while the Gorilla Glue dries. I know this is not going to be everyone's taste, but I absolutely love the way this looks. I put it in my living room on top of my coffee table and just treated it as a little tray. I put some greenery and some cute little home decor items in it and it is the perfect size for a half sphere. Y'all, look what I see. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. There's four of them. They're the perfect patina as is. I just need to remove this screw. That is not an issue. This is so exciting. I'm definitely getting all of these. I will take this home with me. I know in last week's video, I picked up the glossy white finials and added a transfer and some wood and some greenery to it, but I will always pick up these finials because I just love them and there's so many different things that you can do with them. And these rustic pieces are kind of like architectural salvage as well. And I just love how these rustic pieces look with glossy white ceramic pieces. I grabbed these birds on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description because I'm pretty sure they're still available. Available. I have used them on a ton of different projects. I grabbed a little bit of hot glue and some Gorilla Glue and I simply just glued these finials to, I mean, <laughs> glued the birds to the tops of the finials and now it's just a cute little decorative piece that you can use in your home. I also love how these dark wood rustic pieces look with IOD's air dry clay. So I love the bird song mode. It is one of my favorites. So I grabbed it and they have these two little birds that look at each other. And I just thought that would be perfect for these two finials. So I'm going to put my clay in. I'm going to pop out my molds and then I am going to glue them to my wood finials while they are still wet. That way they will dry to exact curvature of the wood finial and don't you just love the contrast between the dark wood and the white iod air dry clay i think i like doing these pieces because we're already starting off with a good base the finials just have a really cool architectural look as is and then when we add these glossy ceramic birds or little clay molds it just takes it to the next level and really creates a unique piece of home decor 
and I really love the contrast between the rustic wood and the crisp white. I think these will look great on their own, but they also look great as a set, and I think they look really cute as bookends as well. I could not find the actual footage of me thrifting this, but I do know that it came from the Goodwill bins and it's an older clipboard, but it has some water stains on it. So I wanna go ahead and paint it. I'm gonna be using the Fusion all-in-one paint in the color Rosewater. It is a beautiful light, light pink color with some gray undertones. It has a very pretty vintage look to it. And I'm using my Stallmaster angled brush. That way I can go around the little clip here because I do not want to get any paint on the metal. I ended up putting two coats of paint on here and then I came back and distressed it because I did want some of the edges of the clipboard to show. And now that I have a clean painted background to work with, I want to go ahead and add a transfer. I think the rose water color goes perfectly with the flowers on this transfer and they have that beautiful typography. This is an image from the Lover of Flowers IOD transfer. I am absolutely loving this transfer book. Y'all raise your hand if y'all got one of these. It is so good. So many things to choose from. So I picked out the transfer transfer that I thought would work with this piece and I'm just going to use my transfer tool. I'm going to rub it over the transfer and it is going to transfer the image onto the clipboard and look how good that looks. I feel like the color combination on here is absolutely perfect. And it's absolutely giving shabby chic vibes. So I grabbed a few pieces of lace out my stash and I'm just going to put it through the hole in the clipboard and tie it up in a little ribbon. And I think that just adds a cute little extra detail to it. This came out so cute and absolutely looked like something that needed to go in Ren's room. I styled it with a small old book cover that I had and a cute little Easter picture as well as a sprig of greenery. And I think you could change up the color and the style to fit with your personal decor. Here's some more inspirational pictures from an antique store that I love to shop at. They use these old clipboards to display old photos. But I saw it as an opportunity to make almost a mixed media type of artwork. So think about a theme. Maybe you want to make a wedding memorabilia board. Some flowers would be beautiful. Maybe dried flowers from the wedding. Maybe the wedding invitation. Maybe some pictures. The possibilities are endless. I would absolutely love to see what kind of themes and ideas that y'all have for these old clipboards. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. I want to take a quick minute to tell y'all about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs where you can grow your business, you can succeed online, and you can connect with your customers. Squarespace is who I chose to host my e-commerce uh, store. So I just want to tell y'all a few features that I really like about Squarespace. It's so easy to start your website without any kind of design background because Squarespace has all of these templates that you can pick from. There's designs in every category. So you just fit one that fits your particular business. Then you can customize the look and the content to fit your unique needs. You can sell any products on your e-commerce store, whether you're selling physical products like me, digital products, service-based products, or even subscriptions. Squarespace has all the needs that, all the tools that you need to start selling online. And when you're ready to connect with your customers, you don't need to go to a different platform. Squarespace has a built-in email campaign system where you can take all of the products and your listing and plug them straight into your e uh, email campaign and send them right out. So if you think that you are ready to take your business to the next level, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs and they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs at checkout and I'll have everything linked in the description for y'all. Ooh, what is this right here? Oh... That is a nice looking stool. It needs to be recovered. Let's see if it's sturdy. Oh yeah. 
that's really sturdy. It has screw on legs. I definitely can do something with this piece. This piece caught my eye. It's cream with kind of like an olive stripe. It's actually a smaller curtain, but the fabric is thick and gorgeous. It is lined, so I'm gonna grab it and put it in my DIY stash. I might have some chairs or something that needs to be recovered, or this would also make a beautiful pillow. I removed the legs because I really want to paint them. So I went through my stash and looked for the perfect color. I think Fusion Nouelle is going to look so great with this fabric. So I painted all the little legs. Now I do think wood would have looked fine too, but I just love this color. And if you haven't used Fusion Paint, it has a built-in sealer. So it's a one and done. And look how smooth and beautiful these came out this was just one coat and a few little touch-ups i want to add a stamp to this and i think iod's mercantile stamp is going to be the perfect size you get two sheets of stamps with this one i'm going to use the one that says quality grains but i just want the little wreath and the quality grains and the piece in the middle so i'm going to take everything off of here and ink up my stamp i'm going to be using the stone gray ink because i just want it to be subtle maybe look like a little bit worn and since this is a kind of rough textured fabric it's not that smooth i'm not going to get a crisp stamp which i'm fine with i want this to kind of look like an old worn piece and since this fabric is so textured i'm taking my time and just making sure to push all of the places and making sure the ink has transferred to the fabric <gasps> and that is exactly what i wanted it kind of already has this worn age look to it i love the iod stone gray ink so much this looks absolutely perfect and i messed it up i must have had a drop of the noel paint on my table and it got onto my fabric oh i hate that hopefully when it dries it's not that noticeable i wiped it up the best i can so now i'm just making sure that my fabric is in the center of my stool and then i'm going to turn it over and i'm going to take my staple gun and i'm just going to start stapling all of the edges i'm going to pull it tight around the corners i just do it to the best of my ability to try to get it as smooth as possible and once i had all my staples down i just tried trimmed out my fabric now it is time to reattach the legs if you are wanting to maybe try an upholstery project i highly suggest grabbing a little stool at the thrift store it's really quick and easy and i don't really think you could mess it up you should definitely give it a try this is SC wood you know what i'm gonna get this because this is just a great base for diys I have fabric left over, so I wanna to try to use it all up. I'm gonna take the small square piece that I have and I'm going to hot glue it to the wood artwork and then I'm gonna trim off all of the excess around the edges. I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm gonna sand the edges just to give my fabric that nice frayed look that I really like. And then I'm gonna go grab my mercantile stamp again. There was a rooster on there. And I think the rooster is gonna go great with the farmhouse look of this fabric. I'm taking the stone gray ink once again. I'm gonna ink up my rooster and stamp it right in the center. And look, that came out perfect. I still have more fabric, so we are not done yet. I'm gonna do one more project. I have my hot glue. I'm gonna hot glue the top, and then I'm going to fold it over, and then I'm going to hot glue one of the sides. I have this piece here. I think it was where the curtain rod actually went into the curtain panel, and it's all sewn up on all the edges. So I'm just gonna come in and very neatly cut right under that bottom seam. And then I cut it to the size that I wanted. And to me, it looks like some little pockets now. So I'm gonna take my hot glue and I'm gonna hot glue just the bottom of this. And then I'm also gonna hot glue where there is a line. That way it will actually turn into some cute little pockets. I grabbed some ribbon out my stash and cut four pieces. And then the side of the pillow that I haven't hot glued closed, I'm gonna glue two pieces to the top and two pieces to the bottom of that. It's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully y'all can kind of see what I'm doing. 
I did not actually have a pillow this size. I just made the pillow to the size of the fabric that I had left over. So I'm grabbing some stuffing and I'm going to stuff the pillow. And I'm also going to add some stuffing to the little pockets because I do want them to kind of poof out a little bit. I don't want you to be able to actually see the stuffing and I don't want to hot glue this side together. I want it to look like a kind of traditional old style farmhouse pillow. So I took an extra piece of fabric and just put it on the end there and I probably could have hot glued at least one side to kind of create a flap. But anyway, <laughs> it worked and now I'm just going to tie the edges together and I just absolutely love this tied look. Now we have to add some greenery to our pockets. Uh, as you can tell, I've been using a lot of this garland. This is the baby's twilight garland. I keep it in my stash so I can pull it apart and use all the sprigs for different projects or embellishments. So I pulled some off and I'm gonna stick it into the little pockets and then this cute little pillow will be done. One thing I absolutely love about DIYing is that you can create your own collection. So I took this one piece of fabric and made several different items out of it that I could put all together in one room or I can sprinkle it throughout my home. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite piece that I made from this fabric. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what was your favorite project today. I don't know if I can pick a favorite. I really like them all, but I can tell y'all the two pieces that are still in the same spots where I styled them because they just look so perfect right there. I love the pillow on that chair in my living room. And then the clipboard, I put it in Ren's room and it just went so perfect right there. I might actually add a little picture of her like a little vintage looking picture and I think that would be so cute so I just love those two pieces and they are staying in my home and of course all of the IOD products I use today as well as all of the paint is available on my website and also a lot of the greenery that you saw styled in today's video is available on my website in the home decor section. And I also want to show y'all the colors of the month for April. We have Chateau, which is a beautiful kind of warm white. We have Pine Blue, that is just a gorgeous grayish blue color. We have Ingle Nook. This is one of my favorites for spring and summer. And we also have Rose Water, which is a beautiful kind of grayish pink and is the one that I used in today video and I think all of these look so good together and if you're wanting to try milk paint the milk paint colors are mustard and spring blossom and if you don't know what the colors of the month club is it is four custom colors that I pick out each month to go with the season and they are delivered straight to your door. It is $28 a month and that does include shipping. So that is a great price to try out all of the beautiful fusion colors. And if you also want to try out all of the amazing milk paint colors, I have the milk paint plus colors of the month club where you get two milk paints and then four of the fusion testers. So I will have that linked in the description for y'all. And don't forget if you are also interested in starting your own website, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs. And they are giving my viewers 10% off. And I will have all of that links in the description for y'all. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope y'all were inspired and I will see y'all next week for another DIY thrifting video.